Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Father who is full of mercy, the God of all comfort. On behalf of the Muller family and his home church family here at Greenfield, I would like to welcome those gathered here and those watching online to this celebration of life for Dr. Willie Muller, who went to be with his Savior on December 23rd, 2020. Would you bow with me as we commit this service to God in prayer? God, despite our sorrow, we give you praise. We praise you as the giver of life, and we praise you as the one who decides when life shall begin and when it shall end. We praise you as the one who holds us secure in your love, and we praise you for the 95 years of life you gave Willie Muller. Today, as we spend some time reflecting upon Willie's life and death, our hearts are broken. So we express to you our sadness. For we have lost someone we love and care about. We have lost someone who loved and cared about us. Lord, give us your peace and comfort today and in the days ahead. Help us to support one another in love. Keep us strong in the hope that we have in you. For we know that while we grieve, we still have hope. Jesus, you are our hope. You are the resurrection and the life. As surely as you rose from the dead, we believe that one day Willie will be raised. And together, all those who believe in you will be joined together again and live with you for all eternity. Amen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't think any of us are surprised that Dr. Muller selected that as an important hymn for this day because he 
would really want all the glory to go to him. How saying that, we always all know that there are so many more people than we can even count who are giving glory to God because of the life and ministries of Reverend Dr. Willie, as some call Bill, Richard Muller, who was born on July 11th, 1925, as the fourth of eight children to Jacob and Tina at the family home in Kelston, Saskatchewan. He passed away on December 23rd, 2020, just in time to be home for Christmas. Willie was predestined, predeceased by his wife of 57 years, Marie, by his parents, Jacob and Tina Muller, by his sibling, Marie Muller, Louise Muller, Hans Muller, Olga England, Ernest Muller, and Paul Muller, as well as by his sister-in-law, Elsie Muller, by his brothers-in-law, David England and Ernest Hahn and Don Erickson, and by his niece, Patricia England. Willie is survived by his daughters, Joy Muller, Rebecca Muller, as well as her husband, Percy Boyko, by his grandson, Joy Jason Miller, and his granddaughter, Kimberly Miller, and by his sister, Tilly Erickson, and his sister-in-law, Susan Muller. And we have been praying for you as family, and we will continue to be doing that in these days. He's also predeceased by a host of American and Canadian nieces and nephews, as well as grand nieces and nephews, and of course, by brothers and sisters in Christ, too numerous to mention, of whom I am one. And I don't really remember the first time I met Dr. Muller, as I was only three years of age. It was 1957, and my family had just moved to Carbon, Alberta, living across the street from the Carbon Baptist Church, where Willie and Marie, along with their two young daughters, had already become settled. So in many ways, I have known Dr. Muller for virtually all of my life. Actually, the truth is that I have much more than known Dr. Muller. In so many ways, I have always been influenced by him. In fact, I have happily and consistently identified Dr. Muller as my mentor in life and ministry. Although I never spent copious amounts of time with him, he was always there at the pivotal moments of my life. He was the preacher from whom I first heard the gospel shared. He was the pastor who introduced me to Jesus and later baptized me. He was the faculty member who motivated me to step into the discipleship and academic rigor of Christian higher education initially at the North American Baptist College. It was Dr. Muller who provided timely pre-marriage counsel in my relationship with Tamara, my wife, and then officiated our wedding. He was the keynote speaker at my ordination and the one to whom I would readily consult whenever seeking perspective on major decisions in life. It was Dr. Muller who encouraged me to step into his teaching role at the Bible school in, on the cusp of his own retirement. He offered his blessing along with practical guidance every time I had opportunity to serve cross-culturally. He was the clergyman who celebrated my special occasions along with so many significant events in my family and in my extended family. It seemed like he was always there. In sometimes implicit and sometimes intentional ways, he was that constant role model providing a consistent example of what it means to be a pastor, a teacher, a servant, a man of God. 
Yet, of course, this was not only for me, but also for countless other church members, students, colleagues, young and old, followers of Jesus in Canada, throughout the U.S., in West Africa and Mexico, Russia, Ukraine, really the world over. That's why I considered it an incredible privilege when Dr. Muller invited me to share the eulogy at his wife Marie's funeral and subsequently requested I do the same at his own homegoing celebration. So here we are. We always knew this day would come. Dr. Muller would never shy away from referring to this occasion. Yet somehow, for me, it felt best to assume that things would always just remain the same, that he would just always be there. I underwent a bit of a reality check this past summer when I visited him in the hospital following the first of a series of debilitating strokes, which he would suffer, even though he remained clear of mind, persistently cogent, it became increasingly obvious that his body was simply wearing out. One day in late August, after a sobering visit with Dr. Muller, I pulled away for an elongated time of prayer, seeking the Lord regarding this very day waiting on God's perspective on the life and ministry of this tall, lanky servant of God. After a time, I sensed the Spirit of God leading me to examine a very familiar biblical passage highlighting the relationship between a seasoned mentor, Paul, and his protege, Timothy. For a time, I soaked in Paul's words to Timothy as if they were Dr. Muller's words to me when we read in 2 Timothy 1, 6-7, Paul gently admonishing Timothy to kindle afresh the, the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity but of power and of love and of sound mind or judgment. Then, however, my attention became fixated upon how Paul so clearly described his own calling in 2 Timothy 1, verse 11, as, the, as a follower of Jesus who was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it immediately became apparent to me that this very same thing can be said of the life and ministry of Dr. Muller, that he was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Since then, I have rehearsed our countless interactions and conversations over the years, as well as sifted through his book, poring over his life story. And I have been taken by how this threefold, though interconnected, ministry seems inescapable, reverberating a lifelong calling which began with Willie Muller's precarious arrival as a newborn. We read in a summarized biography of his life that's available on the Serenity and Greenfield websites that at the same time of his birth, there were significant concerns regarding his survival. As a result, his father and mother dedicated Willie to the Lord, a commitment that proved to last a lifetime. Unmasking his unpretentious sense of humor, Dr. Muller liked to humbly reference his provisional arrival by quoting his own aunt's commentary at his birth, who declared, the nose is here, when is the boy coming? Nonetheless, his survival was a miraculous answer to prayer emerging from a Samuel-like commitment to God on the part of his parents, a commitment which young Willie Muller made his own during revival meetings as a teenager in the midst of the Depression. Despite the challenges of growing up on a Saskatchewan farm during the dirty 30s, along with the stigma of having German ethnicity in the context of World War II, 
Willie's deep-rooted faith in Jesus seemed to inspire an unrelenting passion to embrace the unfolding opportunities before him while feeding an insatiable appetite to learn and to grow. With only a grade 10 education, he ventured off to the Christian Training Institute in Edmonton in 1942. Immediately after graduating in 1946, he enrolled at Rochester Baptist Seminary in New York to follow his calling to become a pastor. When he graduated with a Bachelor of Theology in 1951, his academic pursuits had only begun. He later completed a Bachelor of Arts from Sioux Falls College in 1965, a Bachelor of Education from the University of Alberta in 1968, Bachelor of Divinity from St. Stephen's College in 1970, a Master's of Education from the University of Alberta in 1976 before receiving an honorary doctorate of divinity from Sioux Falls Seminary in 1987, as well as an honorary doctorate of divinity from Taylor Seminary in 2016. It was during his seminary education in 1950 that Willie met Marie Langdon, a very gifted and attractive dean of women at the nearby Sioux Falls College. Following their engagement on Valentine's Day, 1951, and shortly after Willie's graduation from seminary in May of 1951, Marie and Willie were married on August 11th, 1951, before he, along with his bride, returned to Canada to become immersed in full-time pastoral ministries first at Lauderdale Baptist in Edmonton from 1951 to 1953, then at Carbon Baptist Church from 1953 to 1962, and then at Meadowlark Baptist, later to become West Meadows Baptist Church in Edmonton from 1962 to 1964. In addition to Willie's ordination on November 3rd, 1951, it was during these early pastoral years that Willie and Marie were most significantly blessed with their two adopted daughters, Joy, in 1952, who continues to echo their people passion as a registered psychologist, and Rebecca in 1955, who deeply enriched their lives with two wonderful grandchildren, Jason, and Kimberly. Even though we rapidly rehearse his extensive education and subsequent pastoral ministries, it is important to summarize that Willie was an incredible preacher. Literally, a herald of, of good news, which what preacher is, an effective communicator of God's word, of God's word. While I, I never knew him to rant from the pulpit, the authority with which he spoke emerged from his familiarity with the scriptures as a faithful student of the word. In fact, he had put to memory large portions of the scriptures which exposed his biblical passion. Having said that, it was Willie's integrity with the word that he shared, which legitimized his calling as a preacher and, of course, as a pastor, so that all of the local churches he served flourished during his time of ministry. He certainly seemed to take to heart the admonition which reminds all of us as servants of the word to preach and use words if you have to. Whether speaking from a Sunday morning pulpit or praying during a home or hospital visit, or serving during a community endeavor, Pastor Muller was a true herald of good news, a preacher in the fullest sense of the word. However, after 13 years of being profoundly invested in the local church, Willie's ministry focus shifted from preaching to teaching, from the church pulpit to the Christian academy, when he accepted an invitation to become Dean of Students at the Christian Training Institute, later known North American Baptist College from 1964 to 1973, and then became a full professor at NABC from 1974 to 1990. 
to say that Dr. Muller was a teacher, literally someone who provides instruction, is like stating the obvious. So many of us from one generation to the next were instructed by Professor Muller within the classroom setting, growing through courses which seemed to span the curricular spectrum from various books of the Bible to discipleship to evangelism to psychology to education and Christian education to pastoral leadership to preaching even to such extracurricular courses such as speed reading and time management. I poignantly recall the occasion when in a session on time management, Professor Muller was quizzed by one of the students as to how he managed on any given day to keep up with his own overloaded schedule. His reply was succinct, power napping. I find that I can get by with only a few hours of sleep each night if after afternoons around two o'clock I stretch out on my office floor for a 15 to 20 minute siesta, then I'm good to go for the rest of the day. Some of us tried that, it didn't always work as well. We certainly learned so much during his classes, but it's important to understand that Professor Muller's role as a teacher also followed him outside of the classroom to countless office appointments and coffee meetings where his instruction took on the semblance of offering counsel, of lending perspective, of providing encouragement and sometimes even admonition. Long before student-centered learning became a thing in educational philosophy, Professor Muller's people orientation was expanding the parameters of the teacher's reach. That's why so many, just like myself, regard Professor Muller as a mentor. And it was for me, I know it was for so many others, that somewhere along the way, the teacher lines regarding Professor Muller kept blurring from professor to mentor to confidant to brother to friend. That's why it should come as no surprise that 20 years after his official retirement in 1990, Professor Muller was invited to return at the tender age of 85 to the Christian Academy in order to facilitate mentoring processes as the director of field education at Taylor Seminary from, from 2010 to 2015. And even after that, though increasingly frail, Willie endeavored right into 2020 to humbly accommodate the ongoing requests to teach, to mentor those who continue to emerge from successive generations, as well as continue to develop curricula, the most recent being a discipleship book entitled What It Means to Be a Christian, a work that I know he is needing to complete in glory. It's important to understand before and after his formal retirement from teaching, Professor Muller's role as teacher was morphing into that of apostle, which literally means sent one in the sense of one being sent by God to deliver the gospel to new places. Over the years, his teaching ministry became increasingly cross-culturally punctuated. It is no small thing that along with Marie, Dr. Muller spent more than five and a half years teaching at the Cameroon Baptist Theological Seminary while often simultaneously functioning as a field pastor in that region of West Africa. It is also difficult to calculate the level of commitment necessary for Dr. Muller to serve as an adjunct professor, training pastors and church planters on eight separate trips to Russia, two different journeys into the Ukraine, and who had a measured significance as well as an educational facilitator during seven summers with Campus Crusade for Christ in Mexico. I am particularly captivated with the preponderance of miracle accounts which surrounded Dr. Muller's role as an apostle. 
How else, for example, are we to understand the stunning account of his first teaching foray into Russia when he was hopelessly and helplessly lost while trying to make flight connections in the airport moving from Moscow to Georgiesk in southern Russia and how a total stranger, a young lady who could actually speak English, suddenly approached him inquiring of his destination and after instructing her, she simply seized his luggage to check it in, declaring, I'm on that very same flight. And then how landing at the Georgiesk airport, even though Dr. Muller was nearly the first to disembark, and even though the young lady was sitting immediately behind him, and all the passengers disembarked, the young lady was nowhere to be found when that disembarkment was finished while his baggage was waiting, singled out in the terminal. It should come as no surprise that more than half of Dr. Muller's popular autobiographical work is filled with story after story surrounding his calling as an apostle. Clearly, it was a joy in his life and a passion of his heart. In fact, from as early as Dr. Muller's youngest years of ministry training, when he ministered cross-culturally among the First Nations people near Watasco in Alberta, and then ventured into remote regions of northern Alberta, to when he later planned to churches with the new, in the new frontiers of the swelling urban reality of Edmonton, to when he often sacrificially traveled abroad to faraway places, Dr. Muller's determination to follow that calling as an apostle as that sent one into new places consistently defined his obedience. That's why Dr. Muller's contribution to the work of God's kingdom was appropriately underscored in 1989 when he was honored as the most distinguished alumni in CTI NABC history, at which time a student residence on the Taylor campus was aptly named Muller Hall, which it remains to this day. There can be little doubt that the greatest legacy of Dr. Muller leaves is the impact of the preaching and the teaching as well as the lived out, sent good news among those of us fortunate enough to be close at hand, together with those he influenced in those new and faraway places. Just like the Apostle Paul, who we hear self-identified in 2 Timothy 1, it seems most fitting to similarly describe our colleague, our brother, our friend, father, grandfather, Willie Muller, as having been that preacher, that teacher, that apostle among us, really that giant among us, who now dwells among all the saints gone before us in the glorified presence of the Lord, who I'm sure has already leaned over to whisper to Willie, well done, good and faithful servant.
with my soul, and I trust, uh, Joy, back in Kimberley, that you're truly experiencing the depth of God's grace in your life and can truly know that it is well with your soul, especially as we celebrate Bill Muller's life. If I could summarize to you how I would distill Bill's legacy down to some of its essence, I would say something like the following. Bill encouraged us all to keep our heads in the clouds and our hearts set upon Jesus. To keep our eyes on Jesus and our feet on the ground. To put our hands in the hands of the man from Galilee and to keep our hands in the hands of those we are called to serve. As academic dean of Taylor Seminary, I especially want to celebrate one particular legacy Bill left the many, many people he impacted for Christ through his involvement with Christian Training Institute, North American Baptist College, and Taylor Seminary. My personal family history includes three generations of people who were students at CTI, NABC, and Taylor Seminary. My wife, Kathy Strauss's father and mother, Henry and Loretta Strauss, were students at Christian Training Institute, graduated in 1952. Altogether, Kathy and I were students at North American Baptist College from 1978 to 1983. Kathy used to live in Hilda and Medicine Hat, and she still remembers one sermon that Bill preached at Hilda Baptist Church while she was still in her teens. As Terry has highlighted, the impact of the authenticity and of the voice of God speaking through Bill as he preached. I lived in Calgary and Edmonton and heard and knew of Bill Muller's ministry life during my years in three different Alberta Baptist Association churches since 1976. When Kathy and I attended NEBC, we got to know Dr. Muller as a professor during our bachelor degree studies. Bill was professor of psychology, education, and Bible, and I couldn't say any better than Terry did in terms of just the impact uh, Bill had in his classes, in his personal relationships, and just in his life example. I particularly treasured the time that I had officially working with Bill when I became academic dean for Taylor Seminary in 2014. Bill retired a second time from Taylor from his role as director of field education in August of 2015. Uh, we feel his loss keenly even as we rejoiced in God's provision of Carol Potratz to continue the good work of supervising uh, training for our master's students. And our, one of our daughters, Natasha Corner, graduated in 2013 from Taylor Seminary with a Master of Arts Intercultural Studies, and through that time um, had connections with Bill and heard stories of Bill's impact on people's lives and his mentoring and direction of uh, students pastoral, ministerial, and uh, otherwise um, field education opportunities. Well, aside from the overarching descriptions I started with about how I view Bill's legacy, I want to dig deeper into some more specific ways in which I have experienced Bill over these last 40 plus years during my time in Alberta. 
I'm going to use Bill's name, B-I-L-L, as an acrostic to summarize some of the key issues, key ways in which I have experienced Dr. Bill Muller. So letter B in Bill. To me, stands for Boulder, B-O-U-L-D-E-R. Though he is much bolder, <laughs> he's a bolder kind of guy on top of that all. Well, what happens when the unstoppable force of life hits an immovable object called Dr. Bill Muller, eternal life. Dr. Bill Muller was not only bold for Jesus, he was a boulder upon which we could build our lives for Jesus. I am a pebble. Some of us are stones. The apostle Peter was a rock. Jesus Christ is the rock. Bill was a boulder who is now receiving the eternal rewards of his steadfastness for Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, sums up for me, Bill, quite well. Paul writes there to the Corinthians, Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that it is from the Lord that you will receive your reward. The I in Bill's name, to me, speaks of incarnational. Bill did not just look for ways to imitate Jesus Christ in his daily life choices, but he humbly submitted himself to Jesus each day so that Jesus could live out through him in all of Bill's life choices. Bill did not just do what Jesus did. Bill sought to let Jesus be Jesus through him. Bill prioritized being holistic in his Christian life. He wanted to live wholly for Jesus. He submitted his whole mind, body, soul, and spirit to Jesus, for Jesus to be who he is through Bill each and every day. I love that about Bill, that I would meet Jesus in his presence. Bill looked for the burning bush of where God was present and working and humbly joined God in that work. He helped light fires of passion for Jesus, and he helped ignite the gifts of God in people's lives for ministry and fanned them into flame. Two I words pick up on this theme of incarnational work in Bill. As a man who incarnated Jesus Christ into his daily life, he was inclusive in how he sought to bring people into the presence of Jesus and validate their call for ministry. He was particularly bold in affirming and validating women for ministry, encouraging, particularly through Taylor Seminary, women who came with a sense of call for ministry to fan into flame their giftedness through his personal mentoring. I, as a dean, was so appreciative of that. He also built relationships among other denominations, he didn't just stay within the evangelical world, but sought to be a man of grace and inclusiveness and in building up the body of Christ worldwide. Even with respect to the kinds of students we had at Taylor, he would work with other denominations to help them live into their denominational ethos as best as they could. And particularly appreciate even how he worked with Bishop Jane in the Anglican Communion to help foster the ministry training for some of the Anglican students we had. It was a rich, diverse body we have as Taylor, and Bill was a significant factor in facilitating that. Bill was also, in terms of his intellect, he was holistic in his ability to integrate a sharp, academically attuned mind with a compassionate, strategically focused heart regarding ministry development and equipping. Terry highlighted, uh, Bill's academic journey for us so well with his bachelor degrees, his master of education, and then also the honoring of Sioux Falls with the honorary doctorate and Taylor with the honorary doctorate in 2016. Bill's contribution in the academic realm of equipping people for ministry was significant and well affirmed, and he had the mind that was sharp right to the very end. In terms of ministry, as Terry highlighted, after 20 years of retirement, at the age of 85, who goes looking for a director of cutting-edge ministerial development and looks for somebody 85 years old? 
because Bill was ageless. <laughs> and he was always on the cutting edge of seeing how, is, how can we help reveal God's kingdom on earth and equip ministers of the gospel who are faithful to develop the church in living out what it means to be Christ. We benefited so greatly from his ministry heartbeat and from his strategic um, in involvements. And we've heard of all the many involvements in terms of previously his ministry involvement that fit him so well with respect to Taylor's role as director of field education, the numerous churches that he was on, involved with, and also internationally in that apostolic direction um, that he so well fulfilled. L in Bill. We're going to do the two together, loving leader. In all his life, as a minister of Jesus, whether as a professional minister or simply as an everyday follower of Jesus, Willie loved the unlovable, advocated for the disenfranchised, argued that Christians must respect people, all people, irrespective of their socioeconomic, their cultural, their ethnic, their gender or religious background. He incarnated the love of Christ into every interaction in his daily life. He carried the cross with majesty and grace and drew many people unto Jesus. As a lover of people, Bill was a leader. He loved working in a team, as a team, for the universal team called the church. As we've heard, Bill pastored a number of churches here in uh, Alberta. One of them, Lauderdale Baptist Church from 1951 to 1953, um, was actually a church plant of Central Baptist and would later become the core congregation that eventually named itself Northgate Baptist. Northgate Baptist has been my spiritual home for over 31 years. And I just so highly value the fact that Bill was a part of our history in terms of who we ha have been and who we continue to become. In terms of field education, as a, a, somebody who built a team, Bill built a great team to work with him for those years of supervising our ministry training at Taylor Seminary. He got Dr. Dick Patzel and Bruno Voss to work together with him. And what an amazing team they formed and a gift they were to our Master of Divinity students in their ministry training. Well, in summary, Bill, B-I-L-L, -L, for me, his life legacy is summed up in the four letters of his name, which actually end up forming a sentence. Dr. Bill Muller is someone who has left us a legacy of being a bold, incarnational, loving leader. May we follow him in like manner in his footsteps. The Apostle Paul invites us to, to imitate himself. In that vein, I will invite us to imitate Dr. Bill Muller. But for many of us, we know Bill by another name, a name of endearment, that is Willie. So allow me to conclude by using the W and the Y in Willie's name. I could talk in terms of the W, how Willie is wise, how he has a winsome personality, how he had that wink, that mischievous little wink and also how he was a world traveler as a minister of the gospel. But I want to focus in upon the why to conclude. The why for me stands for yes. Willie is an example of someone who is a yes. The Apostle Paul says about Jesus that all the promises of God have their yes in Jesus Christ. Willie not, would not only say a wholehearted yes to Paul's statement, but Willie himself is an ongoing statement that says yes to the possibility of experiencing all of the promises of God through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Our students at Taylor were the recipients of God's grace through Dr. Bill Muller for five years and through NEBC for all those many years and through CTI prior to that. What a gift he was to us all. What a gift to us all. Amen. Not only let that be so, but let his legacy continue to be so. In Jesus' name, amen.
It is truly an honor to speak today at Dr. Muller's memorial service. I am Tyler Williams, and I had the blessing of being one of Willie's pastors for the last seven years here at Greenfield Community Church. When I started the conversation with the leadership of Greenfield about the lead pastor position, I remember being delighted to hear that Willie not only attended Greenfield, but was also on the ministry council. And after I started here and learned more about the history of Greenfield, I learned that Willie had been a faithful member of the church from almost its very beginning. He and Marie's memberships were transferred to Greenfield on December 11th, 1968. And throughout the history of Greenfield, Willie served Christ faithfully, faithfully in many different roles. He was interim pastor of church ministries, he served on the ministry council on and off for many years and was, of course, a regular preacher and teacher. He was awarded the title and honor of Pastor Emeritus in recognition of his faithful service at Greenfield in 2010. Terry has already talked about Willie as a preacher, teacher, apostle. I thought I would add another image to this picture by talking about Willie as a shepherd. The scripture passage chosen for today's service was actually picked by Willie himself. And in Psalm 23, God is pictured as a shepherd who comes alongside and faithfully guides us in our life's journey. As a good shepherd, God leads us to the green pastures and the quiet waters. He refreshes us. He guides us along the right paths for his name's sake. He even shepherds us when we walk through the darkest valleys, or as many would be more familiar with the translation, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. If you've ever, ever had the chance to talk to Willie about his life and his experiences, it becomes clear that God was a constant shepherding presence throughout his life. And Willie had a long, full life. And God was with him, guiding him throughout his entire life, through the good times and the trying times, through all the ups and downs. And perhaps what we need to be reminded of this day is that through all of our days, even when we walk through the darkest valleys, God is with us. God loves us. He knows what we're going through. He empathizes with our weaknesses. He understands our pain and our sufferings. And of course, he understands our grief. He understands because he himself has faced pain, suffering, and even death when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on our behalf. Now, in the same way that God is shepherd to each of us, Willie, too, shepherded scores of individuals over his lifetime. Through his preaching and teaching, his mentoring and wise counsel, as well as his friendship, Willie served the role as a shepherd in our lives. And like a shepherd, he was always directing, encouraging, and at times, humbly nudging us back on the right path. I always found Willie to be insightful and encouraging when we talked, whether it was about something in a sermon I had preached, or even bigger issues like our merge with Renaissance, or discerning the direction of our church here at Greenfield. We valued his sage input while he was on ministry council, and we would seek it out when he wasn't. And I personally valued the times when we would go for coffee or lunch or just talk on a Sunday morning after the service. I always found Willie to be wise, forward-thinking, and eager to join God on mission no matter where that was. One particular area where I appreciated Willie's perspective was a strong advocacy for women in ministry, which Ralph has already briefly noted. I actually first met Professor Muller many years before coming to be pastor at Greenfield. I was a student at NABC in the late 80s, and he was one of my professors. My most memorable connection 
and memory from that time was in the winter semester of 1988 when I took his women in ministry course. I was the one male in a class of about 30 women. As a relatively new believer, he had a tremendous influence on my understanding of that issue, as well as my overall pastoral development to this day. And I remember on more than one occasion, Willie commenting to me on how he enjoyed Pastor Stephanie's preaching here at Greenfield. And while we readily shared Willie with other churches and organizations, we always will value his significant ministry here at Greenfield. Now, Psalm 23 ends with the assurance, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the assurance that Willie knew in his heart. Willie had a strong, unwavering faith and a certain hope for the future. I would be remiss not to clearly point out at Willie's memorial that the Christian hope is hope in the future resurrection. I remember Willie in a sermon he preached from this very platform in 2014, how he highlighted the hope in the resurrection. And he was preaching on Philippians chapter 3, and when commenting on the Apostle Paul's overwhelming desire to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead, Willie said, and I quote, More believers have difficulty with the resurrection because all the trappings at a funeral militate against a belief in the resurrection. There seems to be nothing in all that we do that indicates hope in a future resurrection. But the Apostle Paul said, I want to be certain that there will be life after death and I will participate in that life. Nothing was to take the Apostle Paul away from his steadfast belief. He wanted to die a victor, winning the prize for which God has called him heavenward in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Willie's hope, like the Apostle Paul's before him, was in the resurrection. Not only the resurrection power of God in our lives in the present, but also the belief in the future resurrection. Willie had the firm conviction that because of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection, physical death was no longer the end of the matter. He believed that the God who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise us from the dead at Jesus' return. And so the Christian hope is hope in the resurrection of the dead at the return of Christ. That this hope is in a future bodily resurrection after Jesus returns, and it isn't talking about what happens immediately after we die. Rather, the future resurrection to new life is talking about the life after, life after death. We believe that our broken earthly bodies will be raised to new life, that Willie's body, which by the end was frail and worn out, will be raised to new life on that last day. We believe that we will live together in the presence of God forever in his new creation on the new heavens and the new earth. And at that time, as the Apostle Paul says in Thessalonians, we will be with the Lord forever. So what happens after we die? Where's Willie right now? Perhaps the best answer may be found in Jesus' words to the thief who died on the cross next to him when he said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. We can be assured that Willie is with his Lord and Savior, the great shepherd of the sheep, awaiting the future bodily resurrection in the new heavens and the new earth when Christ returns. And it's with this certain assurance we can say that he has won the prize for which God has called him heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now we will continue to celebrate Willie's life and faith with a slideshow tribute. Well, it was in my childhood day Now with the spirit 
now I'm my savior I was filled Not filled Oh, in the Fashion meeting Oh, Lord, I'm merry They linger still In that little Oh, that wooden church Out on a hill You know every Every Sunday morning Help me hang The family prayer Then to that Old country wagon
Thank you, everyone who has contributed. Would you bow with me in closing prayer? Father, today we have reflected on the life of Dr. Muller. We have heard the stories of a life lived for you. As each of us lives out our lives, we pray for your guiding presence and ask that you continue to provide peace and comfort for each of us. Amen. And hear these words in the benediction as we close. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And go in peace.